Boy, Three Body Problem had a jaw-dropping trailer that really made me want to check it out, but ended up having a first season that left me feeling impatient and bummed out. I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. This is my uncut review of Three Body Problem Season 1. The synopsis on IMDb reads, A fateful decision made in 1960s China reverberates in the present where a group of scientists partner with a detective to confront an ex existential planetary threat. So, um... I gave my full attention to the first two episodes. Normally, that's usually what I do for reviewing a, a, a series premiere, is just the first two episodes. So I at least did that. And I knew based on the first two episodes, okay, dang it, this show is not for me. But then I watched the rest of the series um, at 1.5 speed with descriptive audio on a peripheral screen while playing some video games to see where its major plot points and themes were going because despite my lack of interest in the moment-to-moment -moment experience, I was very curious in where the plot was going, where the themes were going. So you can take my thoughts on uh, the episodes after episode two of The Grain of Salt if you like or my thoughts on the first two episodes as well with The Grain of Salt. Uh, I'm just being upfront about my engagement level here. Um, Despite crazy looking sci-fi visuals in the trailer, it's mostly a sci-fi drama in the real world as we know it, with the craziest stuff usually in a super advanced VR setting. Much of the story focuses on characters trying to solve mysteries about what people are experiencing in the world. Something about the, the laws of physics, the nature of how things are, is changing in ways that increasingly cannot be denied and people are getting worried about. Um, and then as that problem gets revealed, the source of that problem is revealed, then people are trying to solve the problems of the big threat that is looming over them, with that being the big problem that they'll be trying to troubleshoot, I think, for the entire run of the show. It's very plot and concept driven. The ensemble cast have various personality elements and various motives, but time is not really given to letting performances carry the scenes, to really seeing character arcs play out as a major focus. So. Because of that, and because those kinds of things are a real value for me, I only rarely emotionally connected with the characters. Additionally, the existing motives that are presented aren't very fleshed out, I think, and some characters are, are that are given pretty generous screen time are just kind of killed off. And I'm like, oh, well, that seems like a waste. Why didn't we give more time to some of these other characters, give them some character moments to breathe, some arcs, so I could, you know, go on a journey with them a little bit, invest in them a little bit more. I understand why that's used as a device, like, oh, let's focus on this character and then kill him off. In fact, there's some producers in common with this show, with the, uh, the Game of Thrones series, which I, I don't know from first-hand experience, but I guess that was a pretty common thing uh, to kill off characters that were getting focus and that kind of shock factor is not a selling point for me. I want to care about characters way more than I want to be surprised about who lives and who dies. The plot reveals um, really come at a slow burn pace with what felt like treading water happening for all but the last moments of the first three episodes. Uh, the reveals were very interesting and they changed in many cases the status quo in some big ways. So I was left with a show whose plot points I was very curious about, but with real impatience at how quickly the story and ideas advanced, since the individual scenes I was not very interested in. So, um... As I said, after the first two episodes, I tracked with the show, sped up on a peripheral screen. Netflix is one of the few streaming services that will allow you to watch stuff at 1.25 speed or 1.5 speed. I almost never take advantage of that outside of, you know, watching YouTube videos. But uh, once in a blue moon for a little while on Netflix, I will. And this uh, that was the case for me for the rest of this show. Um, and because I wanted my curiosity to be satisfied without giving up, like, gaming time, you know. <laughs> so... Um, you know, I might be interested in seeing where the show went in season two 
if some of the ideas hinted at during season one were reached at the season one ending. There was even some stuff going on that made me think, huh, is this show about to have a massive time jump? And if it had done that, then I think I would have had a much better chance of like wanting to watch season two. But no, that kind of idea didn't really go anywhere. Maybe it will eventually, who knows? Point is, it, it's not moving forward into the er areas that I see it could potentially move to um, near as fast as I want it to. My, my guess is, for my tastes, this whole series would work better as a single season of eight episodes with a bunch of sort of walk in place trimmed out of the story. Uh, as far as cast, I thought they were all solid performances and in some cases some really great emotive moments in these brief instances that came and went. So I have no complaints, but it's also not a show that's edited to showcase performances and to let that drive the show. So they mostly feel simply there and solid rather than memorable or a draw of any kind into the viewing experience for me. As far as stunts and visuals, it's not filled with effects outside of the VR sequences. The, the sci-fi stuff takes a while to offer real-world spectacle outside of VR because of the grounded nature of the show. It eventually gets there with some big moments that like, whoa, but then it, things kind of settle down again and feel mostly like the, the normal world, you know. Um, and, and the quality of the effects I thought were very good for standard network TV. This is on Netflix, so it's not. It's a premium, you know, streaming platform. Um, so very good for, t for regular TV. But now and then some CG looked very unconvincing to me with the recreation of a large boat that is prominent in one episode being a, a big example or with some green screen work that felt all too obvious in a few cases, but still better than the CW and most network uh, television effects. Okay, is there anything of a moral, philosophical, or spiritual significance going on in the themes of this thing that might trigger some worthwhile thought or conversation? I think absolutely. The deeper I got into the show, the more I felt that was the case. In a pivotal opening scene, it's the first scene in the whole se season, um, the Big Bang Theory is acknowledged to leave a space wide open for the existence of God, as opposed to matter existing eternally into the past. Um, so with the Big Bang Theory, time, matter, space all have a beginning point, um, which really leaves a big opening um, for God. In fact, there are some great arguments why God is actually the best explanation for uh, the beginning of the universe and physics and stuff as we know it. Um, and belief in the existence of God is portrayed, uh, sympathetically at least, in that the villains in the opening sequence are clearly and oppressively opposed to monotheism. So uh, anyone that would have uh, a belief in some form of monotheism would, if anything, be seen as the oppressed and the victim, and therefore uh, our sympathy would be garnered for them, as opposed to them being an antagonist. That being the case, at the start of this season, I was a bit surprised when the rest of the show's writing overwhelmingly seemed to spring from the kind of, frankly, unsophisticated uh, atheistic ideas and slogans that are all too common on the internet. I'm not saying there are no sophisticated arguments for atheism. I'm saying that the, the type that you typically hear being spouted on the internet are very unsophisticated, not thought out, and this felt like kind of an armchair d debating atheist was in charge of, you know, writing some of these moments, and I'll maybe give some examples of that a little bit later, but just that kind of unsophisticated thinking and slogans that are all too common on the internet seem to kind of flavor various elements of the show. I have no idea what the writers may believe, but um, the themes and the sentiments that were present throughout the first season seemed very sort of flavored by a naturalistic perspective on the universe and the big issues of life and death and a perspective that isn't very thought out. Um, so for example, a very commonly misunderstood sort of go-to Bible story uh, was used by a character to scoff a bit at the idea of God. Um, the many worlds, aka multiverse hypothesis, was subtly presented as a hope that one could cling to for continued existence after this life, uh, the logic of which was completely broken. Um, the villain of the story expresses more than once that we, as humanity, we can't save ourselves. And that's a core belief of, of Christian teaching, that we, can, that we need uh, an outside savior to rescue us. Uh, there's also a man facing death, 
but lacking belief in an afterlife who comforts himself with this vague notion of his remains being scattered to join the stars and that he would some way continue existing in that way which i think is those kind of like not thought out sort of vague and poetic sounding things are the it's the kind of frankly nonsense that we uh, often will hear at funerals that if you stop and think about it, I'm like, this is not a source of comfort. This doesn't make any sense if you press this um, with an examination based on reason, you know. Um, also, as this same character is more closely facing his death, an emotionally intended song plays, I mean, I assume it's intended to be emotional. It has kind of like a, a quiet emotional uh, vibe to it. But it, it, it has lyrics clearly expressing that heaven is a place on earth, which is kind of, that, that's a very kind of naturalistic sentiment. And on top of all this, and probably much more pervasive, are the mysterious and powerful beings who threaten humanity's existence in this show, but whom many humans have come to worship, even referring to belief in them with very religious language like faith and the title of my Lord or the Lord or our Lord. Uh, it, it gives me at least the strong impression, whether it's the truth or not, I have no idea, but it gives me the strong impression that the mind or minds behind the story find religion and religious people off-putting, discomforting to them, or even threatening maybe in some way, since the greatest threat of the story is very strongly couched in familiar religious, sometimes specifically Christian terms. Again, I'm only speculating. I have no idea. Someone could just Google real quick the writers of the show or the book that it's based on and, and tell me what's what. Uh, the intent, though, ultimately isn't important to me. I, I, it's kind of irrelevant to how I think about it. It's more about, like, okay, what's the effect? What's the, what's the net result regardless of what the intent was? I think that is something that's much more relevant to us as believers as we're sorting through uh, entertainment experiences. And the effect for me was that because of how the show seems to lean to me philosophically, I was frequently bummed out and taken out of the story experience thinking about the false ideas so many people have absorbed, um, the false understanding of basic monotheism or basic tenets of Christianity that people just absorb um, and the lies that they tell themselves in order to make their way through life apart from God. So I was just bummed out thinking about that kind of stuff in and out, taking me in and out of the show as I was watching. You may not have the same experience at all. And if so, and it's, you know, therefore not a hindrance to your enjoyment of the show, great. But that was my experience. All right. No idea what your tastes are in TV shows, but if I were a time traveler, I'd go back in time and say, Vader, skip. Um, it neglects the real character focus that you value that really is instrumental in pulling you in. To, uh, to fiction. It takes too long to get to each of its interesting plot points for you and still doesn't advance enough for you by the end of the season to make you think that season two is going to be worth watching. Uh, on top of that, it's just going to bum you out a number of times as you think about the broken ideas so many people accept and adopt as their view of reality. This one's rated TVMA for gore, language, nudity, smoking, suicide, and violence. The nudity is unnecessary uh, but it's just in one episode um, so anyway yeah those are all of my thoughts for now on three body problem season one as always love to get your thoughts and reactions in the comments below please like share subscribe click that bell to stay connected i do want to thank the spirit blade insiders for making this review possible uh, you can get info about the benefits of joining over at patreon.com slash spirit blade productions then of course i hope you check out our podcast and stay connected to all cgc content over at christiangeekcentral.com as we continue to geek out and seek the truth for more chat about geek entertainment, answers to your questions, and news from the wider world of Christian geekery, get the Christian Geek Central podcast today on iTunes and other podcast services.